All right, so we're on to the next section, which covers polar coordinates. Um, so polar coordinates is an alternative coordinate system that allows you to describe the location of points in the plane. Right? And, and typically, this is something that we overlay on top of the usual rectangular coordinate system. Right? So the Cartesian coordinates that we're used to are often referred to as rectangular coordinates because the way we locate a point is by drawing in a rectangle. Right? It's a rectangle with, with base x and height y. Right? This is typically how we locate points in the xy plane, right? xy coordinates, that's how we do it. Uh, but it's not the only way that you can locate a point in space. Well, on the plane, I should say. Uh, another way you can do it, uh, you know, we, we start at the origin. Origin is home in every coordinate system here, right? So the origin is our reference point. You know, you think about giving someone directions, you always got to give a starting point, probably from the place where you're giving the directions, or maybe you tell them, you know, get to a certain point and then go from there, depending on how you do things. Um, and so we might do something like this. We always say, okay, start at the origin and go in a certain direction. How do we specify a direction? Well, a direction in the plane is just an angle. Um, so basically we say rather than going kind of, you know, along, it's kind of the difference between like moving in a city along a grid system, right, along streets, right? We go north, south, east, west along the streets. We can only go along the roads. But if we're, say, navigating on the open ocean, well, we're going to point our compass in a certain direction and we're going to go, right? And we can go straight across, like so, right? So I could also tell you how to get to that point by telling you an angle and a distance, r and theta, right? Now you can see that r, r is essentially giving you the, the radius of some big circle, right? So you have x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, right? And so once you're on that circle, right, well, every point on the circle corresponds to some value of theta, right? So this is what we're doing. We're, rather than using a rectangle, we're going to use a circle, right? Just a different shape. We're going to use a different shape to tell you how to get where you need to go, okay? Now, the polar coordinate system has a lot of advantages, really useful in situations where you have some sort of circular symmetry. Um, really useful for, for certain combinations of x and y, right? Um, in particular, right, um, if you have things like x squared plus y squared, right, well, that's just r squared, right? And if you're staying on a circle, well, then that's just a constant. But even, even if you're moving back and forth, still, one variable is better than the combination of the two, right? Maybe. Depends on the situation. Uh, we also know that... Um, we can get this relationship between, so this kind of tells me how to get r, right? So r is essentially square root of x squared plus y squared. Although we will sometimes allow r to be negative. It seems a little bit unnatural the way I'm telling you to set it up here. But basically a negative r value is going to correspond to, well, we, we point our compass in that direction and we put the engines in full reverse and we go the wrong way, right? We can do that. Um, now, that does lead to one sort of defect in the polar coordinate system. Um, I can, if I wanted you to get to say this point here, there's two ways I can tell you to get to this point over there. I could give you this angle going all the way around and then tell you to go forward, or I can give you this angle and tell you to go backward, right? So there's more than one way that I can describe that point. The nice thing about rectangular coordinates Every point is uniquely determined by those two numbers, x and y, and there are no other numbers that will give you that point, right? But for polar coordinates, well, there are, there are many different ways to describe a point. I mean, and never mind the fact that you can always add 2 pi to your angle and you'll get to the same point, right? Um, but you could also add pi to your angle and change the sign of r. Right? So, so using r and theta as coordinates, right, so we kind of want to think of this as, as also r theta. Now, for a given r and theta, you will get to a particular point. So it's not like there's going to be some ambiguity here if I give you these two numbers. You're going to know exactly which point we're talking about. Um, but 
there might be more than one set of numbers that describes that particular point. And so maybe that's an issue. But it's one that we're, we're willing to live with because it actually simplifies things quite a bit in a lot of problems, OK? Um, now, so here's how to get r. If I know x and y, what about theta? Well, I know that uh, y over x, y over x is just tan theta, right? Opposite over adjacent. So one way to get theta is to say that theta is arctan of y over x. That gets you into trouble if x is equal to 0, of course. So you might want to say, oh, yeah, if x is 0, um, you know, if x is 0 and y is positive, then we're up here. So we should do pi over 2. If x is 0 and y is negative, we're down here. We should do minus pi over 2. We probably want to include that. Um, so yeah, this is not perfect, but it works, right? Um, and actually, probably if you, if you restrict your angles to be between minus pi over 2 and plus pi over 2, and you require r to be positive, um, no, that only gets you half the circle. I guess you have to either allow 0 to 2 pi, or you have to allow r to be negative, one or the other. But don't worry about it. The other thing we do is we can go the other way, right? Look at this right angle triangle. This side is x. This side is y, right? From the right angle triangle, we can see that, well, you know, sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So y over r is sine theta, or in other words, y is r sine theta. Um, cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. x over r is cos theta, or in other words, x is r cos theta, right? So this is the co polar coordinate system in a nutshell. We give a direction and a distance rather than giving um, two, two distances, right? Um, and we know how to convert. If we have r and theta, we can get x and y. If we have x and y, we can get r and theta. Well, up to, you know, there is some ambiguity there. We can always add multiples of 2 pi, that sort of thing. Um, but this does give us a mechanism for moving back and forth.